Okay, so we're going to talk about measuring angles from an analog clock in this video. And the first thing I want to do is review how a clock works because I think a lot of people don't know how um, analog clocks work. However, if you know how this works and you want to skip this, look in the description um, for time markers and you can skip over this explanation. But otherwise, let's just kind of quickly review this. Okay, so an analog clock, so you've got the 12 numbers on it. So, um, you know, you have the, you know, the, the minute hand and the hour hand. So let me just break this down. So the shorter or the wider hand is going to be the hour hand. So sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's just wider. So you just have, kind of have to interpret on the clock. And so whichever number it points to is that hour. So for instance, right now it's pointing to the three. So it's three o'clock. Now the hour hand moves slowly from one number to the next within the hour. So for instance, this is 430. So notice that the hand is shorter in this case. So when it's like in between numbers, you refer to the previous number because we know that the clock moves this way. So here it looks like it's in between. So I'm going to refer back to the four. And so I know I'm in the four o'clock hour and then I could tell that this is 430. So the, the longer or the thinner hand is the minute hand and each number on the clock re represents a five minute increment for the, the 60 minutes in an hour. So here is how that looks. These are the, the relevant numbers. So they go up in, in um, go up by fives. And so I always kind of remember like the main ones. So at 12, you're at the top of the hour. Um, the three is 15 minutes in the half. What this is the 30 minute mark and this is the 45 minute mark. Um, so that's kind of a way you can help yourself. So if I have something like this, so what time would this be? So I can tell by looking at this. So it looks like, you know, I'm kind of in between the two and the three. So I'd refer back to here. And then the minute hand is right on the seven. So that would refer to the 35. So this would be 235. And then we can also approximate minutes in between. So for instance, um, like between the zero and the five. So you kind of have to, you know, just do this visually, but like we would divide this into one, two, three, four minutes, and then this would be the fifth minute. And then um, we'd be six, seven, eight, nine, and then the 10th minute. So you kind of just have to approximate when you do this. So for instance, if I have this time here, so it looks like I'm between the one and the two. So I'm at the one o'clock hour. And then I would approximate that this looks like it's like at the three. So this time here, this would be one o three. Okay. So just to make sure you got it, um, what time is it here? You could pause the video and, and just try on your own. Okay. So in this case, um, I've got the, I'm near the eight and then I, it looks like I'm kind of between the three and the four, but I'm not perfectly in between the three and the four. So you, you get a little bit approximate. So I'd say like, this is like eight sixteen or eight seventeen, probably like eight seventeen. So you, you might be off with like a minute or two, but you know, the, the whole idea with the analog clock is, you know, it's, it's, you, it's good enough, right? All right, so let's talk about angle measure basics now. All right, so here, if I've got the, the minute hand and the hour hand, this would be 90 degrees on the clock. This would be 180. And then there's different ways that you could measure this, but I am viewing this as the angle kind of in between. So we're gonna call this 90 degrees. So you can't have an angle over 180 in this video. Okay, so from one number to the next, how many degrees is that? So if I go, so if I have, you know, here to here, how many degrees is this on my circle? Maybe you want to pause and think about that. So you're going to take 360 divided by 12. And so that's 30 degrees. So there's 30 degrees between each number. So this is very important to know actually, because it can make finding the angle measure much quicker. So for instance, if I want to find the angle here, so I want to find the angle from here to here. Since I know that there's 30 degrees between each number, I, I can really like go very quickly with this. So first of all, from the 12 to the three, this is 90 degrees. So I can leverage that knowledge that we just talked about. And then I just have to figure out what, what is the angle measure from here and here. And to do that, I know that from the three to the four, that's 30 degrees. And then from the four to the five, that's another 30 degrees. So I can just add those up and then I get that that's 150 degrees. Now finding the angle is tricky when the hour hand moves because the hour hand is going to move very slowly from one hour to the next. So what I want to do is I want to show you how to find the angle for 820. Okay. So whenever you have a problem like this, and if you don't have the clock, I think it's really best to draw the picture, like draw an approximate because then you, you kind of understand what it is that you're trying to find. The picture is 
extremely helpful in these problems. So the first thing I do is I draw the minute hand right here on the 20. And then to get to the 820, so I know that the, the hour hand has moved a little because we're 20 minutes into the hour. So remember the hour hand is gonna move from here to here very slowly. So the way I approximate this is, you know, if you're if you're just trying to get used to this and you're just trying to draw like a ballpark estimate. Okay, so first I will just approximate like this is what this would be at eight o'clock on the dot, but I need to move this just a little bit up, but still be closer to eight because we're not we shouldn't be halfway through the hour yet. So maybe somewhere around here. So I just kind of draw something to kind of approximate that I'm going to move this up. So we'll move it about there. You see how I did that? Okay, so um, so let me get rid of the green parts. So here's about 820. So you just want something that can kind of help you visually inspect these types of problems. All right. So this is the angle that we want to get to. And I know just by looking at this, I can divide this up into this, 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 and this. And we've already talked about this, right? So those are the 30 degrees. So I'm kind of there. But the issue is that we've got this little mini angle in here. And so this is tricky. Okay, so um, over the course of an hour, how many degrees will the hour hand move? We've got to think about this first. So the hour hand moving from here to here, how many degrees is that? Well, we've talked about this, right? This is 30 degrees. So the hour hand is moving some fraction of that 30 degrees over the course of the hour. So the next thing you have to think about is how far into the hour are we? And so we can think about this from a uh, like a, a fractional perspective. We are 20 minutes out of the 60 minutes into the hour. And if I reduce that, that becomes one third of the way through. So we are one through third of the way through the hour and we are one third of the way through the 30 degrees. You see where I'm going with this? So one third times 30 degrees is 10 degrees. Okay, now you might say, oh, okay, great. Now we're, we're good to go. You've got to think here, all right? This is where this actually gets kind of tricky. It's going to seem obvious in this problem, but I'll tell you for the next problem, this is actually going to get a little tricky. So, oh, just stay with me here for a moment. Okay. So like I said, this part here, this is 30 degrees. And the way I want you to look at the hour hand is that, so we've got like this little 30 degree section here. And this hour hand is really kind of like dividing it into two pieces, right? So I could take this hour hand and extend it and look at this as if it were two pieces. Okay, so I now wanna think of this as two different parts. I've got the pink part and the green part. This is always how you wanna kind of divide up this, this part of the angle. And then I have to figure out what, what's the degree measure of each of these. So this smaller part that I just found, this is 10 degrees, okay? And what would the, the angle measure of the larger part be? Well, just by looking at this and, and just thinking about it, this would be 20 degrees. But in this particular problem, the angle measure that I need is this 10 degrees. So here's, here's what's going to happen in these problems. Sometimes you need this number. So you always have to like kind of divide this up. So sometimes you might need the other part of the number. So like the 20 degrees at the time you're going to need the 10 degrees. This is why you're going to need the picture. The more you do this, you're going to see why the picture is so important because the picture is going to help you figure out which part of this, this um, like angle measure that you actually need. Okay. So final answer then, what is the final answer? So I've got all those 30 degree measures that we already found. And then this other 10 degree measure in this problem. So this comes out to 130 degrees. So this was a 130 degree angle that we had. Okay. So, um, now what I want to do is I want to have you try. So I want you to pause the video here. And like, if you just watch YouTube videos and you never pause and try, you're, you're kind of missing out. Like the, the experience between you and me is you have to try. And if you, even if you get it wrong, that's totally okay. But by making mistakes and then figuring out where you made those mistakes, that's where the learning really happens. So it's very important that you actually pause, try and work this out all the way. Hit play when you're ready. I'll show you everything. Okay. So um, let's, oops, so so first things first, we know we have to draw the picture. So here's the, the 05 part, and then I'm gonna approximate again. So here's where 10 o'clock would be. So I just need to move this a little bit up from that. So this would be like my 10.05, okay? So that's, um, oops, that's how I um, approximated that. All right, so the next part of this is just figuring out how many of those 30 degree measures do I have? So I can kind of, um, you know, 
cut up the angle like this and I know that these are both 30 degrees. And so now I am left with this portion here, some part of 30 degrees that I have to figure out. So I'm gonna divide this into pieces and we're gonna figure out what is kind of each piece. So how far did the hour hand move in five minutes? So we're five minutes out of the 60 minutes in, so this is 1 12th. Okay, so this is where things are gonna get a little funky, okay? So I'm gonna take 1 12th of the 30 degrees and I get 2.5 degrees. All right, now like I said, you've got to think before you do this. This is where the hour hand has moved up to. So this 2.5 degrees, which part of this is 2.5 degrees? So I've got these two different parts. Again, which piece is the 2.5 degrees? This little piece here. This is the 2.5 degrees. So I, I don't have this drawn perfectly to scale. It's kind of hard to, to draw some of these. But this hour hand has, it's only been five minutes. So it's barely moved. So moving from the 10 up here, this should be a 2.5 degree piece. So this green piece then I find by taking 30 degrees minus 2.5 degrees to get 27.5 degrees. And so now I can put together everything for the final answer. So I've got the 30 degrees, the 30 degrees, and now this 27.5 degrees. So you see how you have to think and just like think about what makes sense in the problem. In this particular instance, I needed the other part of the, the 30 degree like cutout, I guess. So it just really depends. And that's why you really want to have that, that picture in front of you. So this comes out to 87.5. Now, what if you're not allowed to have decimals? What if you have to answer in minutes? So if you have to answer in minutes, in one degree, there are 60 minutes. So now I have to convert this decimal to minutes. So I'm going to take 0.05 times 60 over one degree. Um, so notice that the degrees are going to cancel out. By the way, if you have no idea what I'm talking about or if you want to see a video on this, I have a whole video where I explain this. So um, you can you can go to my website or you can um, look in the description or whatever and I've got links to all that. Okay, so anyways, so I, I finished multiplying these parts together. I get 30 minutes. So my final answer then, I can either have 87.5 degrees or 87 degrees and 30 minutes. It doesn't matter. Um, okay. So I have more example videos on this, by the way. I just wanted to make sure that I got through kind of the, the basic idea. Um, if you found this video helpful, consider liking it or leaving a comment or sharing it with a friend who's maybe working on the same thing or subscribing to my channel. I'm trying to grow this channel and offer lots of free quality math help. And otherwise, um, that is it for this video. So I'm going to just leave it there. But like I said, if you'd like to see more examples and, and you want to try some more, just check out the description and you can find those. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.